I feel like tonight what he's trying to, what he wants to say to you is, if you really want this revival, it's going to cost you. It's not going to cost you in a bad way. It's going to cost you in a good way. But it's going to cost you. He needs for us to think like the disciples. Drop the net and follow me. So he has given some of you gifts and abilities to disciple, mentor, train, father, heal. He's given some of you gifts and anointings that you came to the point where you didn't think God was ever really going to use you. And now that he has you to a point where you have laid down ambition and the desire to do it just because you love to do it. There's a part of that that can grip us that isn't, that isn't healthy. Once you get to the point where it doesn't control you any longer, the dream is his. And you're not dreaming just because you want to do that. Now he can do it. Because while he's been preparing the earth for 30 years, he's been preparing you. And some of you have gifts and anointings in you that you don't know are there. You're going to find yourself doing things in the next year, two, three, four, five, ten, and you'll be surprised. If you've been following after the Lord with your whole heart and to the best of your ability, pursuing Him, obeying Him, a worshiper, Walking with the Lord, just in the general sense. If you've been doing that, God has been working in you in ways that you don't even know about. And he has, the, he has the ability to just bring it to a place of shift in a, in a moment of time. And sometimes he does it when you don't even expect it. You know, when he... When he rescued me from my life of drugs, because, you know, my dad, he was in ministry as a pastor, he had an affair, and then he ended up divorcing mom and married this lady, and, and we were just sort of destitute, and it was just devastating. And everything I believed in was shattered. And so I started running from God and church and doing drugs and alcohol and just turned to the party scene. And I wasn't doing it out of rebellion. I was trying to find something to deal with the confusion. I was 17 years old and just thought, I don't know if I believe in any, I don't know what I believe. But I certainly don't believe in this stuff. That's where I was. And he pursued me for two years. One night he cornered me in a bar. A nasty bar. Not just to sit around and have a beer with somebody bar. I'm talking about a nasty bar. And a live band was there and I was stoned out of my mind. And I was about this far from the speaker and I was just letting the I was vibrating, <laughs> losing my hearing. I was, it was all coming together really well. And in that moment is when he made his move. You, know, you, just, don't, you just don't know sometimes what he's doing. And he can do it so quickly. He sobered me instantly. And I heard his voice as clearly as I've ever heard it in my life. What are you doing here, son? I said, 
what are you doing here? And I was touched, but I was embarrassed. And I felt his love because I thought, he came into this big pen. He came in this pig pen for me. And he said, this is, you know this is not who you are. See, he's going he's to show me who I, who I am, who I was. He's been working, he'd been working, he'd been working, he'd been working. He used to go back to my bed at night when all my friends were, were gone. And the party was over and I'd lay down and I would just think. And they didn't know it. But I would feel the presence of God come in my room. So even in my pain and my confusion, he was working in me. And when he knew the time was right, he just flipped the switch and he snuck up on me in my pig pen. And can you believe, I don't, how does he even do this stuff? The name of the bar was the boar's head. The boar's head. Of my own personal pig pen. And he said, this is not who you are. And I still love you. And you're mine. And this will never be who you are. Talk about messing up a good high. I'm just trying to tell you. He can do this stuff quickly. No one would have looked at me and said, I was about to turn my life 180 back to God. No one. He's working and he's planning and he's preparing us. And he's about to flip the switch. And lives are about to change. Sinners' lives are about to change. Confused. Young people's lives are about to change. Deception is about to be broken off of them. People in government are about to change. People in education are about to change. And he has been preparing them, but he's been preparing you. 